my name is Gabriel Juma Uchim. I'm the founder of Gebrova uh, since 2019. Uh, it has been tough. Um, basically, you know, when you're starting something, you need to do a lot of things. You need to run up and down and look for customers, secure the ground. Yeah. Uh, we offer services for European vehicles, German, and uh, we are fully fledged company. Uh, you will get services. You will uh, actually, if you are looking for minor service, you'll get somewhere it's specified for the minor services like oil change, diagnostics. They yeah, are actually have the best diagnostics, yeah, which we ordered from abroad just to work on European vehicles. Suspension, it's, it can be in a wide range, it can be minor, which maybe you just need a bit of brake pads, they have bushes, but when we say major, it means the old cars to be yeah, worked on, all of it underneath. And about the spray boot, we do, actually we are the best paint people around here. Uh, we have been working with other companies known for painting, and we value beauty, so that's our key. share a lot even as we uh, get into this grand opening of this uh, uh, garage. I know that um, it has always been that uh, big things start small. I just want to start by first congratulating uh, uh, for this uh, wonderful you know, uh, setting and business that uh, you have established in this place. It's also a good thing that uh, you have chosen to start it before. And there is power when we begin uh, whatever venture we want to undertake with God. There is, there is power. Because when God is roped in, we bring the whole, the whole, you know, composition of who God is into this particular thing. And, and there we cannot go wrong, we cannot lose because God is powerful. But the Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 1 and verses beginning with 1 that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Uh, the author says the earth was without form and void and there was dense darkness and the spirit of God hovered over the surface of the deep. Then God spoke and God said, let there be light. And uh, there was light. This would be my 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 focus uh, even in this hour as we share uh, from the text. That when God spoke and said, "Let there be light," one there had never been light. Nobody knew what light was and how light looked like. But when God spoke and said, "Let there be light," the Bible says that suddenly there was light. It's amazing that. Uh, God created the vessels that carry light on the third day. Uh, have you noticed that in the scripture? That on the third day is when he created the sun, the moon, to carry light. But he is so powerful that he created light without even containers for light. He said, let there be light, and, and there was light. And when the light came, the light dispelled darkness, and, and this light gave him an opportunity to now start creating 
what we see and the things that we cannot see. But he started by introducing light, and this is very important. When, when we start with light, light dispels darkness. Light gives us an opportunity to do great things. Light, uh, you know, prepares uh, a ground for all the things that we want to accomplish. And God sets this up and says that uh, before I creep the trees, before I creep the animals, I'll start by dispelling darkness. I'll start by creating an atmosphere for beauty and for all things that are that are good. And so he says, let there be light. And uh, we're glad today that just before you get into your business and to start the business, uh, uh, you have chosen to bring in light. This is going to make a difference. This is going to make a difference. In fact, uh, of all the sermons that have been preached in Karigat, I think this is one grand sermon because it's on the road and everyone can see that there's something that we have chosen to start with God. That's a very powerful testimony uh, for the cause of Christ. Let there be light. What you have done is this, that with introducing God into this, uh, you have shunned darkness, you have chased away any, you know, evil forces that can come and rally against you. You have put God and displaced the enemy. That's that's so powerful. The other thing about light is this, that light, uh, you know, facilitates the growth of so many things. You know, light, especially the sunlight, uh, you know that life would be unbearable on the planet. Uh, sometimes when young kids suffer jaundice, they say you take them into the sun and let them bask. That's, that's the regular for it. Without light, you know that uh, plants cannot process their food because there is no light. And so, uh, I, I believe that this is important to what you have done. That you really thought into this picture. Uh, now uh, you will get enough, uh, as a plant, you will get food for yourself and your family. And uh, as an animal, you, uh, that, that figurative, you will be able to get what will sustain you and what will keep you in the right you know, state of health because light has been introduced. Uh, we always uh, flourish where good things are. We flourish where good things are. And I want to say that there are opportunities out here uh, for even much more. But again, let me read the text uh, that I had prepared for you, the book of uh, uh, Psalms chapter 75, no, rather Psalms 75. Uh, Psalm 75, and uh, I'll read from the uh, English Standard Version. From the east or from the west, and not from the wilderness, comes lifting up. Verse 7 it says, But it is God who executes judgment, putting down one and lifting up another. The, the, the King James Version says, Promotion comes neither from the east nor from the west. And it says, God is judge. God is the judge. He puts one up and brings one down. One, one of the things that many people have failed to understand and to notice is that it's God who gives people what they have. It's God who blesses people. We can say that, uh, that someone could be shrewd in business and someone could be able to do a few things to bring it together. But eventually, it still is God. It still is God. Because uh, in the Bible, the book of Romans says that um, the gifts of God are without repentance. So God can bless someone, and God does not rescind. When, when He has blessed, He has blessed. Even when the individual changes their lifestyle and, and, and follows after the enemy, God does not receive the gift. He does not give and says, no, I changed my mind, now bring it back. No, God does not do that. When He gives, He gives. And so when He blesses, He blesses. And He blesses everyone. And Jesus says that the sun shines on the wicked and on the rushes. Uh, the rain falls uh, for the wicked and for the rushes because it's God. That's the nature of God. He gives so liberally to whomsoever. But as I was saying, many people have failed to understand that it's God who does these things. And, 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 and when God gives you, it doesn't matter what man thinks. When, when God has bestowed the blessing, it doesn't matter how much the world can rally against this that God has given. Because again, uh, God in His giving, His giving is His character and it's His nature 
And when God gives, it's an eternal giving. God does not give and say it's for a span of time. No, 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 it never works like that with God. When God blesses, he blesses eternally. I will share with you a story. Once upon a time, as a young man, uh, younger than I am today, I still think I'm young, right? <laughs> What's important is the vertical connection. Always remember, connect vertically. In fact, uh, there's a practice. You know, before I came to Nairobi, Elder, I, I used to carry boxes for Mwindi, some Mwindi in, in, in Kisumu, just to, you know, as a man, you have to do certain things. So I, I carried boxes and, you know, I labored in his shop. But one interesting thing I saw of this man, though he worshipped idols and he worshipped things that I could kick, you know, <laughs> you don't care about he worshipped idols. But this man was so devoted to his idols that I thought this is a great lesson for me, a Christian. Before he stepped into his, his work space, yeah, the man had to do some, you know, chantings and some stuff. He had to worship his idols before he opened his business. And I figured that maybe this is what we need to do as Christians. We are worshipping a, a true God. We, we're not worshipping things made by hands. We're not worshipping, you know, the creatures. Uh, one, one of my elders yesterday in church was sharing a story. I don't know where he got it from, for it's not in the Bible, but he says it's about Abraham. That Abraham walked in his father's uh, shop, and his father was, a, uh, was a, a, you know, someone who forged uh, idols and sold to people. So in this shop, he says that uh, there was one big idol and uh, there were small, small idols in, in, in the shop. And so uh, he says that uh, Abraham, Abraham one day waited until his father had left the shop. Then he took an axe and he, you know, kind of decimated all the other small gods that were in the house. And he took the axe and placed it in the hands of the big idol and he waited for the father. So the father came and said, who did all this? And Abraham said, it's not God. That God just got angry today and decided to smash all this. And the father said, no, he cannot do that. He is but an idol. He's just, he can't do this. What do you mean? Then he said, why are you telling these things that can't do anything to people? And uh, he says that that's the point now. What takes Abraham and Abraham starts to jump. But I, I, I don't think it's we are different from you know then. We serve a powerful God. By the way, if you did believe it, now get it from me. The God itself is God. The, the other book that also shares this thought is the book of First Samuel, uh, chapter number two. When Hannah got a child, the Bible says that uh, Hannah celebrated God. You should read that prayer, and uh, she says that. Uh, God is able to lift someone up and God can take someone from the throne and throw him in the dump. God is able to, you know, take someone from the lowest of spaces and put him to sit with the princess. And God is able also to do the opposite. He says God is able to kill and God is able to give life. God is portrayed in this, you know, in this chapter as one who is all powerful and that's true. God can do all these things. So my prayer for you as I wind this up is that uh, Gabi, you are on the right trajectory. You got it right. Your radar has picked the right direction. And now that it has picked the right direction, don't move from this. Just keep on in that direction. That, keep on that trajectory. And sooner or later, uh, God will be visiting in big ways. But let this not be the only venture we will come to. But I pray that we can come for a second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, as God will bless you. Because again, God, God would want us to grow. When he created Adam and Eve, he told Adam that uh, now you have dominion and replenish and fill the earth. It wasn't only with babies and, and children, but he also, thought, uh, he also commissioned man uh, to be able to su <coughs> succeed in every space that man, you know, uh, trades. So, God be with you, God go ahead of you, may he bless you even more as you continue with your business here. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father and our God in heaven, we thank you so much. It's such a privilege today to come and see what your son has done in this space and in this corner. 
Father, we have seen the beginning of this small garage. But today, O oh Lord, as we open it in a grand way, we thank Thee and we celebrate Your name. For this only is Your doing. This cannot be of man, but this is Yours, O oh Lord. You have brought Your Son, O oh Lord, from where, where He has been to this end. Father, we thank You for Your Son, Gabriel. We thank You for His family. We thank You for all that is His. Among many sons and daughters of men who have established such businesses across the globe, he has come, O oh Lord. He has set himself apart from the rest, and he has come to you. He has come to you because he understands that without you there will be no life. He understands that without you there will be no growth. And just like the sun is needed for life and for growth and for the manufacture of food, he has come to you, O oh Lord, that you may provide all these things according to your will and riches in glory. And he has come, O oh Lord, in the full glare of man, that he has turned to you, O oh God, and he has believed that it's only you who is able to establish him. We have come as his friends, O oh Lord, to witness this occasion. And we are glad, O oh Lord, that you have led him, and we are glad that we are able to see this take place. Now I pray, may your power, dear Lord, rest upon him. May your spirit, O oh Lord, be with him even as he will engage in his business in this place. That may every single customer who will find a place to come here, O oh Lord, uh, be able to leave this place with a blessed heart, knowing that his work was done well and faithfully, and much more that he has encountered not only one good mechanic in this city, but also encounter the child of God. May all that he will say be seasoned with graces from above, and may his family be blessed, O oh Lord, beyond measure, that even his children, his wife, and all that, you know, live under his roof may find a blessing from this place. May he never lack customers as some places are, but may he always find people coming, O oh Lord, who would bless him and bless his heart. Abba Father, as this begins this day, may you give him health, may you give him a long life, and may you even ground him further in matters faith as we prepare for your soon return. For these things we ask in the name so powerful, the name of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and who is our Savior. And may everyone say Amen. 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 Let's say the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. 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 God bless you. So, Langu ni kwa shukuru tu. Mimi wote. Na tuzidi tu hivi kama marafiki wa kale kata. And God will show light. Actually, you are come of the first one to come here. Then now, Elder. Thanks, Pastor, for such a wonderful sharing. Gabriel, we're happy, we're proud of you. Thank you. Uh, as you said, I didn't know my car was the first one. Actually, it's car, when I was, actually, it was a jump. Eh? Now, this car had been numbered for, I think, for almost six years. You know the way we have some small police whereby if the car has done 200,000 kilometers or it has finished five years, then it has to be sold. So this car, but actually that car has a testimony, Gabriel. Eh? Mm -hmm. So the way you are bidding it is you now the time it gets to the level where they want to sell it and then they tell Amref, bid for the car, the stuff. So we all bid, we are about like 10 guys. And I was number three in that, in that bidding. So the first one made a blunder and they actually even approached me and said, because the first one actually got the car was a driver. He came and told me, you know, I've got this car, but I know you're a manager. I want to sell it at 600,000. Because he had put 400,000 for that car. I'm like, why are you so mad? Because you've won it and you know I may get some resources. So I actually told him, why can't I pay you 450,000? You leave for me this car. 
Then he said, no, if you don't have 600,000, I'm not going to give you this car. Then somehow that did Dali, the time lapsed, because we are normally given 14 days to pay, the time lapsed. So automatically it went to the second bidder. Luckily the second bidder had already got another car. So he also declined. So automatically it came to me. But even before I went picking it, number one already, because for me I put 350,000. So number one went and paid the 400,000 to the bank. So I went to the procurement manager and I told her, but you know the policy says if number one, he had even said the time has lapsed, number two has declined. So number three, I'm here. What is this that I'm hearing that he has already paid? So the manager actually said, as per the process, don't do to worry. This is your, this is your car. So it's actually Gabriel who came and told that car from Amri. And I can attest, yes, you are a good mechanic. By the time it was leaving here, it was working. But somewhere, it's now somewhere scratched. The price you asked me was almost the same price of uh, buying it for painting. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm still looking for that man. <laughs> but I think yeah. what you've done is good. Yeah. It's a challenge to some of us. And you will tell you what you want most of the time. Asking how can we be self-employed? And this is the right direction. We will support you where we can. And we want to wish you all the very best as you run this business. And of course, as everybody has told me that we put it in God, everything, we just leave it in, we just leave it in God. So we wish you all the very best as you run this garage. And as you've been told, please let this be, we can make this our Sunday area where we can chill as we do maybe service for our car to support, support one another. May God bless you and may God bless your, your garage. Thank you. My name is I'm also called Juma Nation Madero, and I knew him way back in 2009. He was my mechanic. You remember the number plate? <laughs> Many years ago. Yeah. KBE 728U. Yeah. And uh, I dared to drive all the way to Nyanza when I was still not so much experienced as a driver. But he was the one handling my car and he would call me know if I reached well. And that was a great appreciation I gave him because having a mechanic who can call you means he's more interested in you than the money, in your welfare. So I would like to encourage you to continue with that humanity because whatever you've been gifted with, you should use the same with diligence to serve humanity. The pastor uh, said here something about diligence, which was reinforced by the elder. And we can learn from water. Water can cut through a rock. But even if you have a very soft soil, it can't cut through a rock. So that is teaching us on diligence and determination. So how this for this? Diligence, determination, and after your dis determination, discipline, and dignity, treat you with dignity. And then, as I conclude, we need to have more people like you who can create jobs for other people, can be self-employed, because ultimately we want people to be deployed, not just employed, so that you can use your gift to serve others and create opportunities. And when you are deployed, a good preacher named Max Munro told us that if you are deployed, no one can suck you, but if you are employed, you can be sucked anytime. So these four things, motivation, will help you. It's like the ignition of the car, because when you have a good car like this, but you don't have the key, it can't ignite, it won't move. So motivation is what will give you the first uh, uh, step to take action, and you'll be motivated to do this. Then you also need the diligence, which is like the fuel driving the car. I see some people with very big cars, but they can't go to work because they don't have money for fuel. So they have to call many people, can you come and do it? The younger person to do it fuel. <laughs> so diligence is also key. Okay? And then gift. Fits at its own engine. But even the, the Range Rover at its own engine. But the engine of the Range Rover will not drive the Vits. The Vits is served by its own engine and it can go all the way to Nyanza and back. So your gift, however small it is or big it is, use it and God will add on to it. And finally, you need passion. 
be passionate about what you are doing. Passion is now like the driver of the car. You may have a good car like that, but if you don't know how to drive, it will be just, just be parked there. So I think with all that, you have a package of lessons that you can actualize so that you can rise together and God bless us together. Thank you. I've, I've tried to okay, fight so many years. I was slated from, I say deployed. I was slated from deployed, 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 deployed. But <laughs> now I'm mixing the two. <laughs> so I think what I'll tell you, it's not easy. Yeah? Just like my partner says, prayer is not a substitute for success. If you pray, I, 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 I used to say this to some young cousins of mine, I tell them, you go to church and pray the day and go to treat and see how many marks you get in case of pain. So the same will apply here. Yeah? So just, 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 just consistency in what you're doing. Yeah? And consistency is just a big word. If it's seven, you're here every day at seven, each clan should come here and get you at seven. If consistency is, if, if it's quality, you should be consistent in what you're doing. And then respect, and then you have to be, you have to be made of tough skin. You're going to have bad days. <laughs> you're going to have bad days. Yeah, bad days that uh, you are here, no money, no nothing, but you need to be here because no one else will be here. If you're not here, no one will run your business the same way you run your business. Then, the last thing you need to just live within your means, know how to handle your, your cash. Uh, Captain has very good theory, right? <laughs> and maybe it applies to him, but, yeah. but just, just, just know how to handle it. It will rain today. It will be sunny tomorrow. So today, it will service tomorrow. I think that's good. What you talked about uh, in regard to Gabriel's uh, journey is something that I find challenging and encouraging in me. I know Gabriel a little, but I've seen, I've seen him uh, in stages of the business. I just like to say that I appreciate uh, the effort you had. I sometimes I will even wonder whether you met him. But uh, I just encourage him that what I don't do is to try to think that I cannot manage. I start what I think I can run to the finish of the race. So I, I, I would like to say congratulations. And I would like to encourage you to continue with the persistence you have. Been good in happening, or I put a different place for the business, and I can share the experience that I've seen in you go to. May God bless us all. I was introduced to you by the captain many years back. Yes, but uh, I've seen you struggle. I think starting business is not uh, easy because some of us, I think. I need to do what you can to do this as a good as a man. I'm younger. Yeah? I'm younger. What? One year. <laughs> Everything is still on paper. <laughs> yeah. it, it's difficult. And sometimes I, 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 I remember most... Uh, Gabriel calls me, we, we talk a lot. I think every, almost every. And uh, we've consulted a lot when... Uh, the first time when you wanted to open this place, when he was moving a lot. So I remember when you come to sit up on the sun, when you saw the number then I did, and I got there like a look like a mechanic. So I said, "Me, I'm not a mechanic." I think. So I said, "I thought, hey, how is he going to pay the rent for this place if if he's already looking at something?" <laughs> Some people like us <laughs> to bring them. <laughs> but with, with consistency, prayers, and everything, I, I think you will make it. You will, uh, make it. So I think uh, we have good friends, and, and uh, I think I've also introduced a good number of my friends to you. Yeah. Today I stick with my friends, and they are good or bad. Yeah. <laughs> and so I think uh, Saturday. Yeah. 
Good as one does. Myself, I've seen, uh, I've seen, uh, apart from the prayers of my mother, apart from the one for security and big one, I've seen the, this, this year, I've say the, the year started, the year's been bad. I think the year's been bad in some of my close uh, friends, I think uh, they know that I'm from so many other people in church. And uh, when it was, uh, when it's now ending, I think the happiest, I'm not even happy for myself, but the person who is here, myself is my mother. So, how you treat them, how you take care of them, when something happens to you, they, they are happy. So, how you treat your clients, how you talk to them, so far I've not had any complaints. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So continue, if you're able to be good, and then uh, we'll continue to support. I come out and get married. I do you have a Toyota? Yeah, I'm seeing a Toyota. We're going to speak to you. We're going to speak to you. We're and we are the same in this journey. <laughs> so, so, we thank you and we pray for you. I'm happy that Gabriel has taken this direction. Uh, for me, today's function is not about the garage itself. It is about Gabriel. Because the, ga the garage, God has no business with the garage going to heaven. But God has business with Gabriel going to heaven. So the step he's taken today about having a Christian function to recognize, for God to recognize and bless the work of his hands is about his spiritual nourishment and a testimony to all of us that whatever we do, we put in God's hands for our own sakes. We have not come here today to pray like Indians to the God of money, that God make this be the greatest garage in Nairobi, in the world. God bring money here. We are not here chasing after money. At the end of the day, we are chasing after salvation. Amen. Because even the sinners have great garages, isn't it? Yeah. Even the sinners, and they're children of God, remember. Mm -hmm. Each one of us, whether as a sinner, and whether as a saved person, Amen. person who is looking for Jesus Christ, and who is going to church every day, mm -hmm. we are all children. Mm -hmm. So the blessings will come. But one thing I would like to tell you and leave you with Gabriel, is that prayer is not a substitute for duty, mm. <laughs> Prayer is not a substitute for <laughs> duty. Ebu lala mpaka saine wone kama garage. Na uombe mpaka yo saine wone kama garage. Ita faulu. Yeah? Even God works. Six days and you rested on that? Seven. Work is holy. Work is important. The other thing as a business that you have to know, is that you put this business in the hands of God. You have your employees. Treat them as brothers and sisters. That you should be preaching today to them every single day by the way you behave towards them, by the way you treat them, by the way you walk with them. And it will always be returned, maybe sometimes not through their own hands. We are people, we have been in positions where employer, employees themselves have stolen from you. They've even, maybe even your business has collapsed because of them, but God continues to bless you as an individual. So how will we know the fruits of your salvation? How will we know the fruits of you, that you dedicated this to Jesus Christ? Your employees may be here. Others may be home, they may have heard that you did this. How will they know tomorrow that this garage that was put in the hands of God, it can only be through the way you treat them, that you preach to them every single day. But for us who have come here today, all that we say is this, thank you so much. I just know this is a testimony also to the rest of us, that you have taken this step, and now each one of us will always give to God what is due. And for us, we can only support you as uh, people who may have vehicles, because we need your service. To give us Good service, we shall be here. We can also assure you here today, even as you are a man of prayer, even as we dedicate to this place in Jesus Christ's name, we shall not come here for poor service. Tukikuja hapa na kunya proper service, ituta hama. Yes? 
We will not say because Jesus Christ does not say, bring your cars to the brethren, we will make your cars knock. I'm a guy in front of you. I'm a guy over charge. I'm a guy in you. No. Christianity, being a religious issue, is a matter of principle. That you repair that car as it is your own. That you're honest in every single procedure. And let me tell you, as an SDA, now you brought the church here, closing your garage on Sabbath. Just know that you may see your neighbors having hundreds of cars on that Saturday. But God will always give you back for that day. He will always give you back. If six days was enough for him to create the heaven and earth, as all my friends know, me I always go to work on Sunday. And the only reason is that it is stated in the Bible, thou shalt work for six days. Come on, Allah, Sunday, Pia. Where are you work five? Days. Now Saturday, Pia, Ume, you need. That's why I want to ask today. I usually pass by your garage, Japa, you can't have a job on Sunday. Now, I'm a Fungo. Sasa, Uno, Funga, five days. Garage, your easy song. You know you might be known in the neighborhood that you're working on the on that Sunday that everybody will want to come and deal with. So for me, thank you so much and just to repeat, this is not about the garage. You will it's not a matter of whether you succeed or not. To testify to you people about uh, this man, he's one of the best mechanics that I've ever met actually. And I say this in front of my pastor. That if there is if you have a car with a problem, Gapurel will go through with each and every single until he finds that problem. But I mentored Gabriel for many years. And say, Gabriel, I find you heavy, I find you heavy, I find you heavy, I find you heavy. Yes? I met Gabriel, Kama Kamuka Subu, imagine the Panga Red. I'm a Kunyo Yakotosha. And I asked him, Gabriel, now how do you have me? I said, my, even my grandfather, my mother, who called who am a Kunyo Akutu Numbandi. I tell him, Gabriel, that was in another garage. I tell him, Gabriel, that's a he, he lifestyle, Yaku Kunyoa, and all these kind of things. How can your business move? But Gabriel has come along, and we are very proud of you. But just remember, it is about you. So don't wait after six months and hey, I call the pastor and say, uh, yeah. 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 No, no, this is your Hindi. It is about you. After six months, just know the rewards that God gives you, they are many. But one thing it is always stated, yeah, our God is not only a God of money, all wealth belongs to Him. Yeah? But you can also pray from the time you're born to the time you are dead. In poverty. In poverty. Because your rewards are elsewhere. Your rewards were elsewhere. But whatever you pray for, God will give you. The work of your hands, you shall pray. So God says, try me. Gabriel, try God here. And live. You know sometimes you watch with your employees, with the way you treat your wife, with the way you treat your parents. If you treat your parents in a way that your parents are struggling, surely how would you treat me a stranger? If you treat your wife in this manner, how will you? treat me in that man. So for me, all I would say is that thank you so much. This is a testimony to the rest of us. And let me tell you, no business starts big. Mm. Whether it was equity bank, whether whatever, it starts like this, like a seed. Don't think this few are, this many here are few. That's how I would like to put it. Don't think that you wanted to have here a multitude. God said, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there. We are talking in the presence of God and it is here. He is here today. So thank you and may God bless you. It was our grand opening. As you know, I'm a SDA person. And uh, we could only do it on Sunday because Saturday is our church day. Pastor, as you have seen, was here. Did a very wonderful opening. And we shared uh, the word of Most High together.
uh, we also buy and sell old cars it's japan we can uh, if you have your car somewhere you are not using it and it's not in good condition we can give you an offer then we see if we can do business growing so being like two years in ground running these year growers yeah we have actually been able to encounter so many challenges yeah building up the space and also vehicles coming in we are learning each and every day should always come here because we are qualified we actually are from different schools just working on vehicles comparing notes from other people yeah there are other engineers around so we we are ready for work yeah so you should visit us one day and see what we can actually yeah do for you and we know it'll uh, always be our loyal customer we are actually opposite galeria we are called the brothers you see a big poster indicating apart from that you can also google about us there is map yeah we we'll just direct you to our place of work please you should come visit us one day i know the one day will turn to be you will be our loyal customers that I can guarantee you guys outside there. So please drive into Gear Brothers. You'll find we have a wide range of things we are doing here. We have car wash, yeah. That's after sales service. Maybe if we have done services for service for you, we can, we can offer you a free uh, car wash. And yeah, you can also come here and rub shoulder with the other prominent people. Yeah, you won't be alone here. So you'll be at least also a way of sharing ideas and building your career outside there. Welcome to Gabe Rovers.